Good afternoon and welcome to Healers and Latin Network. We are so honored to have you with us today. Today is webinar 123 and Lisa is going to be speaking with us about shamanic womb healing. But before we start, I want us to do something a little different, please. I would like for you to close your eyes and just to place your hands on your heart chakra. And I want you to repeat and I want you to feel these emotions. I want you to bring in unlimited love and unconditional love. I want you to bring in peace and harmony. I want you to bring in gratitude and grace. Bring in the light that shines above us and cascades over us. Let's bring in the divine and the angel. Let's bring in ourselves to this holy peace because we are so blessed to be here together and just feel that love and allow it just to come back in. Just imagine the love. We have 10 archangels, Gabriel, Uriel, Michael, Raphael, and Athelin. Let us see more, that's very beautiful. Thank you. Uriel is mine. <laughs> <laughs> he's my guide, so I know he's here for sure. There's plenty others, I'm sure, as well. We are so grateful for Lisa to come here with us today. Lisa, how did you get started in all of this? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, when you just feel you have to do something, mm -hmm. but you don't know why. That seems to be most of my experience to date. <laughs> um, I was actually in education for nearly 20 years. So apart from self help books and trying to be better and spending time and spent some time in therapy as well around 11 years ago I didn't really know too much about spiritualism I grew up in a, a doomsday cult environment as it's now known as a religion um, and a difficult family in some way so so yeah um, everything connected to what I would talk about now in terms of gifts intuition healing didn't exist it was squashed away for me so you know as as with a lot of people what an experience and my first introduction really into it my sister was going to a mediumship circle and the lady running that wanted her to invite me along she said your sister's got gifts as well and my cousin was there already so again not unusual in family lineages to have this happening at all is it so so that's when I first started stepping into feeling things and realising that there was something else to, to embrace, really, beyond the mind and, and working in that sense of it. Beautiful. Beautiful. And what brought you to shamanic form healing? <laughs> so feeling drawn to shamanic healing in general started to happen a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I ignored it. I'd looked at I'd worked with Reiki so I did mediumship for a little while I then had my first Reiki achievement around 2014 and then going back four years ago we just finished running a hotel complete disastrous kind of experience but very growing um, it was negative in every direction so once we finished with that I didn't want to back into education ah okay <laughs> that's horrendous as well at the moment it's a car crash a little bit so I wanted to continue with the healing side and felt really drawn to that so I studied reflexology so I'm a reflexologist as well and the shamanic stuff sort of came up and disappeared you know you ignore things and go oh no that's not that's not for me that's a bit out there <laughs> and then I started seeing on, on Facebook somebody called Lisa Bardell 
she was advertising or showing something around womb healings and it was around the mother wound, the father wound. So I started using and working with that and she was doing lots of ceremonies online, which were easy, easy to access, affordable to get into. So um, that was interesting. And again, shifts that I was seeing, I'd have a conversation with a parent and feel differently because I'd cleared something. So the energetic aspect, which seemed a bit different to Reiki in some way, mm -hmm. draw me back in to the shamanic side. So she also offered the moon a key, which is the 13th rite of the womb, which is what we're talking about today specifically. Okay. And alongside that, I looked at and felt drawn to go into a taste today in shamanic healing, which was based in Wales, but actually the two people leading the session, the shamanic mentors, they're based in Glastonbury. So I've just completed my year one of shamanic healing with them. Now I'm doing my case studies, which I hope I pass because I'd really love to do, <laughs> to do that. Um, so that makes me a bit nervous at the moment, pushing me again out of my comfort zone for the millionth time. And the shamanic womb healing I, I did with Lisa last January, so about a year and a half ago. So it's new to me. This is all pretty new. I'm not an expert. You know, I'm a Reiki master, but I wouldn't say I've mastered that either. You know, there's, it's ongoing for me. I'm really pleased to be in another healing network where people, yourselves, are sharing and talking about different things. It's like, oh, that's interesting. I'm always learning. And, and that's the beauty of this. So anything that I don't know, hopefully you will. <laughs> Beautiful. That's how we grow and evolve together. This is that. Amen. So tell us, I do have you on share if you would like to share your presentation and learn more about shamanic womb healing. This is very interesting. Let me press some buttons and hopefully not mess it up too much. She says, when I can remember, I haven't used Zoom and I haven't used presentations particularly a lot. So uh, it's a bit to get used to. Bear with me. You're fine. She says, disappearing everything. Let's move that down. Ah, there I am. Should be that. Now I'm talking out loud. You can see, <laughs> see my thoughts all the time. <laughs> you know, ah, there, that's what I'm looking for. that Ta -da. that's probably the hardest bit for me <laughs> it's not going to be easy usually so oh no you're perfectly fine don't don't apologize perfectly fine we understand completely there, right at the beginning now. So I've talked a little bit about myself because you've very nicely asked me questions to warm me up, which I'm very grateful for. And also I wanted to say how grateful I am to be able to, to have this opportunity to talk about this because I'm wanting to talk more in this sense, not just about anything, obviously. And this is a, a perfect way for me to engage in, in that skill again. It's been a while since my teaching and training days. So um, mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. It's our pleasure. Oh, and also I've got a chapter coming out in a book with Lisa, which is about my childhood experiences. That's what this is about. And I'm a tiny toes instructor. <laughs> So that's reflexology and massage for babies, empowering parents to support babies. Um, I'm a nanny. We've got four granddaughters currently. Beautiful. A few other things going on there in my life that I attempt. Yes. Hopefully, grace. Yes. 
So obviously key is going to be a part of the word that you're familiar with because we've been talking about it anyway. Right. Which is it supposed to be open? Are we supposed to? What's that? Sorry. Are, is there supposed to be a slide up? Yeah, it was just a question about what it meant for you and oh, in okay. terms of. Oh, okay, because we don't see a slide. Okay. Oh, you can't. Can you see the slides? No, uh -uh. it just shows us your box. It didn't actually come all the way open. Oh, that's strange. There's me. I've got it all in front of me. Oh. I'm seeing slides currently. Yes, I see um, it's your inbox or your, it's got client, flyers, ceremony, emails, meditations. Oh, hang on, because you're seeing my, are you seeing my folder? Mm, but not the actual <laughs> slide. Let me, so you're now going to be seeing something different. You see my desktop now? We see your desktop um, um, with all the files. And oh. On the left, it's got um, your airdrop, your recents, et cetera, et cetera. And then over here, it's got your files. But you still can't see my presentation. No, ma'am. Lisa, I think that you need to close Finder. Close yeah. your Finder and then go again to share a screen or stop sharing your screen. Go out from Finder and now uh, click share a screen again but search the page, where is your presentation? And let's see if that works. Thank you. Bless you, Paula. Ah, yes, thank you. It wasn't open to share it. Thank you so much. Can you see it now? Now we can, thank you so much. <laughs> no wonder you looked a bit blank. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's <laughs> all right. So, Read the beginning conversation. I don't know a lot about it. Thank you. <laughs> I'll start the slide yeah. again, but I won't labour on it, obviously. I'll just restart so that you can see. Okay. And you'll have some context for what I was actually talking about, hopefully, a little bit more. So, obviously, myself, my chapter in my book, now you can see the actual <laughs> cover of the book. Beautiful. As I like to write things, obviously having been a teacher, being able to see things, read things, people learn in different ways. And I haven't got the whole show going on, but as much as I can do really. So, so to not even see that and just see my desktop is not so helpful. Mm -hmm. So that was a question. So that's why you were a bit unsure. It's what does it mean for you? <laughs> you now know what that means. <laughs> what Which is obviously universal energy, which mm -hmm. you no, the Mune part is, is love, which is from the Quechua language, which is indigenous to the Peruvian Andes, which makes sense when we look at the rites and where they come from. And then the power of love is the combination of that, which is for me beautiful, you know, the unconditional love from the creator, from source energy, which is exactly what we started with from yourself, Cynthia, which is beautiful. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. So the Mune Key rites, there, there were nine, there are nine rites of initiation. And Alberto Villoldo, have you heard of him? Mm -mm. He's a shamanic healer. I've actually, he's written a few books. I've got one of his books, which I think is quite amazing to read. He brought these to the West in 2014 and their energetic transmissions, they're designed to heal our DNA, as you know, as Petra was talking about earlier, where you're clearing karmic woundings from our lineage and also soul, we're talking about soul karma as well. So it's, you know, the, the interesting thing for me with this aspect is that we age, heal and die more favourably. And one of the things around the shamanic healing, one of the first things our mentors talk to us about is know where you want to go when you die and be clear about that rather than just be going anywhere, which is often what can happen with our souls. So that's, that sort of fascinated me really, that aspect of it. So the nine rites were created 
with the shamans in the Andes and Amazon with Alberto and they're passed on as seeds to be nurtured by the recipient. Now, oh, the right bit. There are actually 10 rites in total, but the last one is called the 13th. So can you guess why that might be? <laughs> <laughs> yep, but 13 is actually a lucky number. Oh, you know, I wasn't expecting that as an answer. That's nice. I like that. <laughs> yes. So the 13th rite is actually the womb rite. So all the others relate to other aspects, and I don't know too much about those. But the 13th links to the 13 moons of our cycles as women, which is an obvious link to the womb. Mm -hmm. It's not called the 10th. It's skipped. Marcella Lobos and Alberto Rilaldo are married. And the reason I mentioned this is because it's Marcella that we'll talk about next. And I quite like this little fact because Alberto was part of the Four Winds Society and still is. So you could see a lot of his work and courses on there. And Marcello is part of that, but also with him. And it made sense to me he brought them to the West in 2014, the first nine, and Marcella later brings in the 13th. So there's a connection in two ways, really, there, at least. So I, I just sort of quite like these little things. It amused me, anyway. Yeah. The origins of the Moon IP. I just wanted to show that I have. Uh, I and I'm, he's very dear to me. <laughs> See, oh, no. Part of the shaman. <laughs> It's in Slovenian. Amazing. Oh, so, what is his yeah, name of that? Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's Heart of the Shaman. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's amazing. I, 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 I have my uh, camera off because I'm uh, cutting some vegetables. <laughs> I'm sorry. Unless you want to watch me. Uh, <laughs> fine. 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 Yeah, okay. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> So the point of the moon AK, the right of the woman, was the lineage of women that wanted this to be created, created it for themselves originally, a group of shamanic women. They freed themselves from their own pain and suffering, and they believed that this was a rite of passage, a, an initiation and a gift that needed to be passed on to all women, to men as well, with the etheric dreams that they have, and to Mother Earth. And the gift of healing and life belonging to all women was one of the quotes that's come out of that from Marcella. So. That's a beautiful quote. It is a beautiful quote, I agree. Marcella, in her origins of the Muneki, 13th right, grew up in Chile. She was surrounded by dictatorship and terrorism, which is not something I could even begin to imagine as an experience personally. So fear, I understand. And this of a dead baby and her terror of this paralyzed her. Four midwives were delivering a baby, a dead baby in this dream whilst the war going outside uh, for all of this fear and terror and then had this weird dream about the baby that knew that it was in way significant and then it wasn't until a couple of years later and her journal fell open at that page that she diaried and she then realised with a lot of it, it took her back into that, that panic and that energy. She's been working by this time. Um, Petra, we can hear. Do you have yours muted? You do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I was having trouble hearing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so she'd started working with Medicine Wheel, she'd started a shamanic journey, so she was, she then heard a voice and also the Jaguar, so the Jaguar appeared to her, telling her to use what she'd learned so far and work with the light. 
quite simply. So she allowed that to take over what she was doing and, and focused on the, the, the way she'd been working, her practices she'd been given and worked with that and then went back into a, a meditative state. These midwives returned to her and that's when she had the delivery of the baby with their support and they also laid hands on her to help heal her womb. That's where she then understood the, the purpose of the dream and babies. I mean, for me, babies signify new beginnings if, you, if you know, you're birthing a new baby and projects and things like that in dreams or things coming to an end, but I hadn't really considered it in this way, this context, to be honest. And she, she lived with decades, as we do, decades of fear mm -hmm. and realized this was deep healing within her womb that had taken place. She trained for 10 years under the guidance of these ladies, these midwives in spirit supporting her. She was guided to work with the shamans in the Peruvian jungle in the Amazon. And she was also then guided to work with other people. So she was taking groups of women to also work with the shamanic traditions and the ways and it was working with a group of women, with a group of shamans that she met and a shamanic journey that the initiation and the passing on of the Munaki rite, the 13th rite occurred. And they created the jungle medicine from specific plants that they chose and wanted this healing to come from. And that was then passed through her veins in order to heal her completely, as you can see and the sphere, the neon green sphere of energy, she was then able to perceive as well around her womb. She was then instructed to pass it on to her mother first to help heal her lineage. So that's what she did. And as she did that passing over, she was able then to see the green neon sphere around her mother's womb and knew that that had been passed over that transmission. So she began her journey in 22, uh, 2002, used to say in 20, and 2014, she started to pass this right on in the March. What underpins it is this phrase, the womb is not a place to store fear and pain, the womb is to create and give birth to life. Because the healing, although it was going in through her in terms of an energy, a green energy or liquid, and then into a sphere, a neon sphere, was also placed into these words. So these are the words that are used in the transmission, along with the wisdom of those women passing on everything they could about living and, and being and being in being out of fear and pain. So this is Marcella's viewpoint of how it felt for her healing as many women as possible, healing men and all of life. Then she was instructed by the same lineage of women to begin to share it more widely. So her first launch in the October of the same year was at Amiga, which I've not heard of before, but I'm assuming you might have done, Cynthia. Yeah. yeah. And so they had a metaphorical pathway, the fallopian tubes, the uterus, and down in the birth canal so that the and men drumming, so they were supporting the ceremony whilst the women received the right and then continued down to be held by the men for them to hold space for the women. And this was with a different female shaman that had had the, the right passed to her. So what does the right involve? From Marcella's point of view, it's a water ceremony, setting up of a sacred space and an altar having flower petals so that we can use those to blow our prayers or blessings into them, to hold them, to put them into the water. 
and seeing water as a connection through from our wombs, the water in our wombs, all the way through to the, the waters of Mother Earth and being able to actually place that if possible. If there's water nearby when I do a ceremony, I can place it in the water, if not into Mother Earth, and that's also fine to share those blessings on. <clears throat> so she describes this as each initiation, each passing of the transmission, it's been like a pebble rippling out energies into the waters of all of us, all of life. Healing the future generations, healing communities, the world, and, and these are the things she talks about maybe using in our prayers along with anything else that we feel is appropriate for us, of course. So it's beautiful. The passing on of the right. As you can see, the phrase that I, which I showed you in the green writing, that runs throughout all of this. This is key to it. And it's a very simple, which is what I love about it actually. It's a very, very simple passing on, but very, very powerful and beautiful. It's actually so um, heartfelt somewhere, somewhere deep down, as I think it was Petra was saying earlier, you know, deep, deep down, you can feel on some level something happening, mm -hmm. even if you can't explain it consciously in some way. So I don't know whether I dare press the video just to show you it or not because of my experiences earlier. But the video you can see on her, the right of the womb site, which I will share with you as well at the end. So you can go and have a look at it, but you're holding arms up to obviously connect into spirit, as you'll know, and then you're activating it within yourself and then you're passing it to the recipient who then also activates it within themselves as well. And something that Lisa did when I was on my day was then kneel at my feet which was a, a very humbling act, which I've continued to do in my ceremonies, but was exceptionally profound because I'd never had anybody, I find that quite emotional actually talking about that, that's interesting. Um, I've never had that experience and certainly the last lady I worked with said as well, you know, it's not it would it very emotional it's, it's having somebody bow at your feet like you're who are you to <laughs> who are you to have that experience and that's part of that you know the clearing of some of our woundings as well so again another simple act but with so much depth to it alongside the right which if you join Marcella's um email list you may experience so she talked about this during a recent write that she shared and went through the whole process for those that were able to join or join on replay when you've had the right or as part of the ceremony you're then looking at releasing what you no longer want because the point of the transmission is to keep using it and it will keep growing so you're sowing seeds but with the language of the seeds with the first nine rites is very much part of the first nine rites. But this, the word seeds not used in the 13th rite by anybody. And when someone said to me, oh, do we get seeds? I, was like, I don't really know what you mean. And it's because I hadn't had the other nine rites, whereas they had, so they were then asking about seeds, but it's the same concept because the more you use it, the more you grow it. And then you can work with some phrases, excuse me, some phrases such as I release my anger to embrace peace for the world. And Marcella shared this in one of her last transmissions talking about children of peace are born, not from violence or abuse when we use this releasing and clear that anger. And then also sowing seeds, which wasn't talked about so much on my actual ceremony day but being able to bring in what we choose into being which is a lovely way of using the energy for, for obviously positive reasons and saying whatever you want to say I use the right at different times as well as the moon cycle and when I feel I need to use it that's when I'll bring it in and I'll use it for whatever I feel is pertinent to that point so again it goes back to we talk about our intuition, it goes back to that and using it in that way. Benefits, we've talked about those already. For me, 
being with women, however big or small the group is, being seen, heard, held, being who you are, however you are in that moment, is one of the most powerful aspects of this, um, quite simply. Downsides? Are there any downsides to healing? <laughs> I don't think so. No, it's painful though, isn't it? <laughs> it is very painful to evolve and to keep evolving and you feel like it is ever going to stop, but you don't. You evolve daily and it is a blessing. Or most of us would think of it as a blessing, I should say. Let me just correct myself. Do you ladies have any questions? That's no, not me. Thank you. And Sorry. you've been doing this for uh, some time. Then you, this is, this is not what I thought. Oh, uh, okay. So, do you know this? Um, no. Um, I've heard of shamanic work um, and of shamanic womb healing, but okay. this is just. I thought it was something totally, you know, hands on type of you know with your reiki you know the hands-on type of stuff i didn't i didn't read about it because i wanted to be surprised and thank you <laughs> <laughs> good surprise bad surprise <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> wow it's interesting you say that actually because as you can see from what i've talked about with the right that's quite short Mm -hmm. But I have actually been for a whole day ceremony and I run currently day ceremonies rather than just a shorter ceremony. And there's a reason for that, too, which might start to address it slightly differently. Um, also, somebody called Lisa Lister, who I've not looked into at all, she does womb healings, but she does it from a slightly different perspective from what I can see, having had a little look on her website around yoga and around working with the womb and massaging the womb. Because somebody recently asked me if that's what I do. And I don't, I don't, I hadn't heard of that way of doing it. So, I mean, I don't do massage apart from instructing parents. So it's not, <laughs> no, <laughs> very simply. So, that. there's the further support with Marcello. If you register on her website to be able to receive emails as I said and she does different that she did a different water ceremony last time with another person involved in it unfortunately I don't speak Spanish particularly well so I couldn't access it because the English site wasn't working for me and I may have just been a bit late on the replay in that instance that was my own doing I can't say more than that really a lady called Eloise Bennett who is in the UK She's in Glastonbury and she does a lot of work around, around um, womb healing, Mary Magdalene, etc. And she created a space on Facebook that people that have had the right pass to them can join. And it just adds a little bit of extra support in terms of what you might want to do with nurturing the right within yourself. She also created a manual of sorts that you could engage with and have, which I've got a copy of, and it helps go through how you can work with the ceremony and what you can do to set up your space. So it's a little bit more in depth than the initial right again and, and adds a bit of extra support, maybe a bit of extra value if you want to see it that way too. So she's included quite a, a, a meaty grounding attunement and protection sequence which involves the archangels and four directions and she's also included card readings and intuitive dance so obviously being grounded and connecting into our higher selves we would do with working anyway but also calling in the lineage as part of this aspect of it and calling in anybody else that we would usually work with ourselves. Mm -hmm. With the card readings, I've actually, I've got the Divine Feminine Oracle cards by Megan Watterson. I don't know if you've got those or seen them, but they're 
for me, they're beautiful cards. And it's, it was just quite nice being able to include this, have this in, as part of the ceremony because you're looking at your woundings and obviously cards come up at the right time with something you either need to, it's just tickling the surface of your consciousness or something else that's going on. So it was a, a, a nice addition to have in there. And also for me, I did a labyrinth walk, so I was able to focus on that aspect or those aspects of the card readings as part of it. So that's quite a nice way of also embracing and, and going within. The intuitive dance designed to be self-expressive but honouring our own selves and everybody's self-conscious and it's all very interesting because that's the point of it is you know removing those layers and going I'm who I am and it's okay that I wiggle this way and not this way and <laughs> I am um, with my last lady said look I'm going to be over here I'm not going to shut my eyes I'm not watching you I'm going to just do my thing and and she did the same and it just helps make things a little bit easier and also this, this whole idea of energy and motion, you know, our emotions and the fact that we just don't move enough and moving our hips, our hips and our womb area carrying a lot of stagnant energy, as you know. So it's important that we give them a good wiggle. Mm -hmm. I probably still don't wiggle them enough. Mm. Other things I've added in, which again, based on working with Lisa, there were things that really added value to being more sovereign, more our true selves, more in alignment. Um, so I wrote my own womb sovereignty declaration as part of my ceremony. I am statements around the womb, around obviously all of the, the positive aspects we want to embrace and bring in. Rose oil anointing, so something that I did with um, an online course with Anna Ontara, if you've heard of her. So she, she actually shared, and I always share her name with this, how to bring in the spirit, the Shekinah of the oil, waking in the spirit and how to use those in the right. So if you worked with, with that, with her, have you seen that? And then I also, talking about healing, I've introduced my shamanic techniques to support independent healing individual healing and also light language I channel light language so I've used that as part of the ceremony because the wombs the womb part of it in the passing on of the right is is beautiful and amazing but it was also really lovely to just have further healing as part of the day in different ways and really clear some stuff and really feel up which is exactly how I felt at the end of my day so as I said, being drawn to the right and not really knowing why, but wanting to have it and also knowing that I wanted to pass it on was really important for me as well. I'd been looking at just before this, um, working with my masculine and feminine balance of energies and hadn't really massively thought about this before that too much. And a guy called Oliver William Huntley, who is again in Glastonbury, he did a course called Calling Him Home, which was all about the masculine, as you could imagine. But he was very much and is very much about developing the masculine to support the feminine. So he was really interesting to start to know because I, I haven't really experienced that with men in my life at all. And being more in my own power started to be more prevalent as a result of that and I carried this into the womb healing and the womb day with Lisa and Lisa actually did the same course with Oliver interestingly so we were mirroring different aspects of what we needed to heal quite strongly in that sense which is often the case as you'll know working with people and groups so no I didn't know a lot about it but I did have shifts within the ceremony. I had the union within me in a shamanic journey of the masculine and the feminine that had begun before that and, and continued to solidify um, with some strange things like, you know, you've got just, you know, just Jesus and Ganesh watching you and all this sort of stuff that you wouldn't talk. I wouldn't talk about anybody other than people like yourselves that understand this. Standing more fully in my own power as a result of it. The deep emotional response I mentioned during the ceremony. And my first 
intimate moment, my intercourse sex with, with my husband was highly emotional as well. I don't quite know why. I know it was connected to the womb healing and will have shifted something, but I, I don't quite know what it was to do with, but it demonstrated that something had been shifting for me on some level and layer, and on an emotional layer. I'd also realised how much I'd been in my masculine energy, working in education, and I was a single parent for 10 years, so just being on it and, and being very, very organised, overly so actually, because so high anxiety as well. I needed to actually really balance that out, so I kind of went the other way a bit too much probably as well in there somewhere. As a room keeper, being able to work with the the right, as I've mentioned, I've used it to set specific intentions for clearing breast tenderness. I focus very much on my physical self to do this and work with myself to feel more centered, but from a hormonal point of view, my heaviness of my periods, which is so and going on for nine days in different ways. And it continued to so things have got easier in that sense um, I will clear my room energy after intercourse anyway knowing that that's you know keeps me whole without any of the imprinted energy within that area so I was talking about my experiences and just what I, what I was doing really and how I was using things um, I worked with a yoni egg, which is something that's suggested by Louise Bennett as part of our aftercare as one of the many things we can do and found that there was cleansing from that that occurred and realised I was pleasing people. I'd, I'd still, I'd, I've done work on boundaries and on fixing things and stepped away from a lot of things, but obviously there's always more to do. So yeah. for me, this was coming up strongly yeah. and saying no rather than feeling like I should do something. So really sticking more boundaries in place than I even had before. So when you did your womb ceremony, this brought all this up or brought it more to your attention? Okay. Yeah. And how did that feel to you when you were able to, was it frightening for you or was it more accepting because you knew what was actually occurring? I found it empowering. It's it's also difficult when you're shifting all the time in a relationship. So there's an aspect of of that that's how do you traverse that when you're the person's not doing any of that? That's quite an interesting aspect of it, which I find difficult and sometimes a bit scary. Um, but in terms of the actual ceremony and the work and, and doing the clearing. I know that that's the right thing for me. So anything that comes up as difficult as it is, it has to be that way. Okay. And I feel quite strongly in the work I do now that that comes first, that's my pathway. That's helped me, all of this has helped me be in my, more in my power and go, this is what I'm doing. And it will come before anybody else saying anything or trying to control that in any way. And if that means that's got to go, then that's how strongly I feel about it now. Whereas before it would have been a bit more, hmm, well, maybe I'll do it, do this instead. It's like, no, <laughs> no, no, it's got to be this. And that's the end of it. Mm. So, yeah, it's had quite a big impact on me. And I don't think I've realised quite how much because you don't quantify everything. You don't write everything down. It becomes part of the integration of things. So it's not always captured, but I think there's quite a lot there, really. Yeah. Yeah. And then the same with um, being the room keeper, as it were, is the title once you've had your, your right. Not that I sort of go, oh, I'm a room keeper. I don't mean that, but it's just something that's because that's egoic, I know. <laughs> yeah. but, but having said that, there's healing still ongoing when you're working in this role and partly as a gatekeeper, which I hadn't thought about. The first ceremony I ran I was feeling exceptionally anxious leading up to it for that week and couldn't work out what was going on. I thought, this isn't this, I felt this a long time ago. What's happening? And I know when we go deep within our own healing, things can surface and be that strong. 
but actually what I hadn't realized until another lady said, well, you're, you're holding space for those other people that are coming. You may be feeling and clearing some of that as well, which made a little bit of sense. Yeah. And the other thing about being a gatekeeper is I didn't realize that that was really a thing that I would be doing in any way. And one of the women on my first ceremony had to ring me a few days beforehand to say that she'd had a dream. She'd been, um, she'd been doing a particular fasting diet, which I cannot remember the name of right now. And as a result of that was connecting in really powerfully with spirit and having lots of really strong dreams and all kinds of things going on. And she'd had a dream where I was dressed in this amazing outfit and I was the gatekeeper. It's like, really? I don't even know what this is about, you know? It's, and it was to do with holding space and therefore you're not obviously allowing anything else into that space, which I didn't consider. And she actually had an experience of the ceremony in the neon sphere of green light around her womb at that point in the dream. She said, oh, I'm so looking forward to the day because I can see it's the right thing for me because of the dream. So it was lovely for me, lovely for her. And I was really glad she phoned me. <laughs> oh. um, other realizations from again, working with other people and talking about parents and how they supported or didn't support mm. in their relationships sort of that loving side. I realized more, more was coming up for me with my own father and his projections and how that looked for me. So again, more healing and more, more coming to the surface for everybody. And some people's experiences they've, they'd had when they were 16 or when they were younger and it wasn't, they hadn't even remembered it. And then in the ceremony day, so at some point there it was, it's come back to the surface again for healing at the right time for them. So um, that I find extremely humbling. Yeah. really yeah i mean all all the and all the healing i do i find humbling anyway it's just amazing and i had ovary ache the last time i did this so again something going on and healing for me even though obviously it wasn't me receiving the rights but i got what i needed so now when a person um and this may be a really silly question a woman is a womb even if it's been taken out, if you've had a full hysterectomy, you can still go in and balance that womb energy, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that is one of the questions that's commonly asked. So we've got an etheric womb, we've got the womb space. It needs to be, and obviously a womb's, womb's the portal, portal to another portal along with the heart. So, you know, it's always going to be there energetically. Yeah. And similarly when we talked about reflexology and somebody loses a limb people still work the foot as though it's there because etherically mm -hmm. it is still there so it makes sense that that would also be true for the womb so yeah definitely mm -hmm. and of course that's where men come into it as well where even though they haven't ever had a womb they may have done in a past life and also their etheric womb will still be present so it's again Okay. unless women don't want them there but again it helps to hold space and helps us with our masculine feminine and helping with that side of it as well for me yeah so um and then obviously working with the room collectively mother earth it's all about birthing creativity the womb space is a container or chalice as is known you know glastonbury and the, the chalice connections there and then I just popped in some perceived woundings that because we were looking at that, you know, what, what sorts of questions were being asked at the beginning of the day for the ceremony helps just to bring anything forward again that might need to be worked on. And that, for me, that was quite interesting to be able to do that with Lisa. So I've continued that into my ceremonies. And also what fascinates me is how we treat men externally, is how we're treating our own inner masculine, which again was quite a profound moment of clarity for me. <laughs> so I hadn't thought about it, but clearly that makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. And then the divine feminine and masculine, sort of picking through these, these aren't things that I'm massively familiar with as a thread. But, you know, beginning to understand how this sits and fits and, and working with the, the feminine more 
rather than obviously my experience in childhood, which was definitely patriarchal and, and working with the male God and punishment and those aspects. So nice to be able to do this and see things differently. And obviously in our world, everything's raising in terms of feminine energy anyway, and the divine feminine rising through goddess energy. And sovereignty, that's another word I haven't thought about, but that's been quite a word that's used a lot at the moment as well, as you know. And, you know, really going back to that power within, which is what it's all about for me, and authenticity and being able to do what I want to do. Yeah. Mary Magdalene, this is interesting because for a while, for quite a while i've seen jesus and denied seeing jesus in meditations as you do of no i wouldn't be that person that would see him why would i and of course that's sort of self-pity of the ego but i see mary magdalene and she's linked to the roses which links back to the ceremonies and also with the Anna Ontara work and, and obviously bringing that in that energy through with roses as well with Mother Mary, who I also see and think, you know, I'm going a bit crazy sometimes, but I then now work with and I channeled a, a meditation with Mary Magdalene, which I then used in my ceremony. It's not a very long one, but just one to support the healing of the, again, the womb. It was focused around the heart and the womb and, and bringing these energies through using the red rose other people's experiences this is from the group i asked in the group what people felt so i haven't done masses and masses of these oh wow amazing isn't it the shifts that people have had on blown away by him have you read that one mm -hmm. don't want to scroll on too quickly <laughs> that was emphatic from Claire. oh wow <laughs> and this one It's quite interesting how the other rights were great, but this one really seemed to punch something higher out of her in some way. It's very interesting. I'm sure. How many times can you just keep having it then? Well, once you've got the transmission, you've got it. So you can keep using it as often as you like. Mm -hmm. So it's always there and it will continue to grow in strength. So yeah, it's beautiful. There's nothing, nothing more you need to do. But if you want to have it over and over, you can also do that because you're going to still grow it. And when Marcella does her online ceremonies, that's what she'll do. She'll pass the right to everybody still. So you're going to keep growing it. So it's, yeah, it's a never ending and it's connecting us all. So for me, you know, if I had it again, and again and again, we're still connecting with each other and helping to collectively heal as well. So, so yeah. Beautiful. Lisa Bardell, she's on Insight Timer, which is the free app that you can download if you haven't heard of it. You can download all the meditations. She created an, an hour long um, ceremony type meditation, which which sets up as a ceremony. And as part of that, she's actually got the, the moon key in there. So you can listen to that and experience it and receive the transmission via that meditation anyway, as well as via Marcello if you sign up to her website. So it's another way of uh, experiencing it. Okay, and Lisa's last name again? Bardell, B-A-R-D-E-L-L. -L. Okay. And she has a Facebook or is it a, a YouTube or? She has got it on YouTube. Um, it's, it, what's it called? I can't remember. I will message you the title of it and the link. Okay. okay. So you've got it then. Thank you. Because it's lovely. It's powerful. She's a shamanic healer. She's going to do all sorts of other things as well. So, uh, so yeah, you'll feel it, I would imagine. Okay, thank you. Beautiful. 
testimonial they're on the website so if you wanted to see a few more there's a few more that Marcella has on her page as well on her site we've asked about men receiving the right women in hysterectomies pregnant women receiving the right but more gently but it's still obviously beneficial because you're clearing the lineage forwards because of the baby so that's amazing long distance is an interesting one yes you can but it's preferred to be given in person, as with a lot of healing, as you know. Um, it's something I'm about to look at myself because I have a lady in Scotland who's not going to be able to make it to the middle of me where I am. So um, I'm going to look at doing a, a shorter ceremony, not make it all day. So I think that'd be too much, but um, something a bit different so that she can have it passed on. That's the website that Marcella has. Mm -hmm. one of them anyway but the one about the right and you'll see the video of her passing it on and showing how that works on that website right everyone if you sign up to the website you'll then be able to log into the website and that means you will then see a list of the room keepers people that have, that have got the transmission to pass on so there are people, I mean, I don't know, you're obviously all in different places, so there are people in different, I mean, there's not going to be everybody on it, I'm not on it, because mm -hmm. something happened and it wasn't being updated, so it is what it is, I'm not worried about that, so if you receive the blessing, the right, you may find you won't be on the list for a while to ever, however, she will send emails because it started happening this year. So it's a new thing Marcella's been doing to connect with everybody. So you will get those. But you'll also see where people are around the world. Any questions? Any other questions? Mm. <laughs> a little overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. There's a, when I started putting it together, it was like, oh, it was a little bit. And then I found something else that I'd been looking at. So that's a bit more. So yeah, there, there was more to it when I looked at what you can do with it to what it actually started out being. So I hope that's okay anyway. As it is growing in, beautiful. Paula or Peter, do you have any questions? No, I don't. Thank you so much, Lisa. You're very welcome. <laughs> Well, thank you, that was great. Thank you. There's a lot to it. Well, I suppose it's what you make it, isn't it? It's what you want to do. Right. That, yeah. Or keep it nice and simple. Right, and sometimes simple is the best way to do it at times. Yes. Yeah, and so when I take it online, it's definitely going to be simple because you can see how good I am with Zoom. So <laughs> we'll do that that cool. way. Well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Thank you so much for coming on and being with us and sharing with us everything. Awesome. That is just really awesome. If we can just close, please, by just bowing our head and let's give a little thing. Heavenly Father, we are so blessed to have you with us. We thank you. And we ask you to bless each soul with us today and those that will watch it in the future. We want to thank you to thank Lisa and to bless her and to bless her business. And when you ask that, you also bless Paula and Peter. And that you bring us all together as one soul, helping the world. One person at a time, through our healings, through you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.